it's nice to be with I you have too. To say, Brian, I love your show. Thank you. You are a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, we I get comments from you on the on the oh, show I, constantly. <laughs> so I, I I'm glad we were able to set this up and talk about quite a few things tonight. And uh, you know, your order is here. You requested your martini, very dry and very full. So uh, um, yes. <laughs> we we delivered. Now, what I think was hysterical is I emailed you and asked you for your bio. And you emailed me back a very lengthy email that began, in 1833, (laughs) a blind man in Ghent, Belgium, invented the first moving pictures of record, and he called it a phonetoscope. Now, I know we all like to have a joke at our own expense now and then, but I said, I know she doesn't go back that far. Oh, it was a great (laughs) period. Are you kidding me? (laughs) It was right before Edison made the light bulb work. Well, yeah, I would imagine so. But what you had sent me there was actually quite a bit of information on um, film history, which uh, you are somewhat of a historian on. Well, I researched it when I heard that uh, J.P. Harris Society was hosting this event. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're right. That was that. And that man happened to be blind. Irony of ironies. Yes, he made the motion picture movie. Uh, And after him, uh, George Eastman develop film and that became the added it to this uh, gizmo that he had created and in very short order it was speeded up to 10 frames per second and now the movie is starting to take shape hmm. and then comes Edison in uh, 1894 and he made uh, a vistascope which had a chamber on the side and a roll of film and, and it, you um, had to look through a slit in order to see what it was. Kind of like a peep show. That's yeah. how that peep show gets creeped <laughs> in there, yeah. So many people kind of refer to the Nickelodeon that way, oh, yeah. and it wasn't at all. Now, did we, did, isn't it true that we had the, the first Nickelodeon here in Pittsburgh? Oh, you bet. So that that we had the first one. There. And it, there's a plaque on Smithfield Street where it, where it took place. And it was a, a, a storefront that was owned by a man named Harry Davis, who happened to be John P. Harris's brother-in-law. And so uh, John had the idea to set up this, uh, well, by the time he got to the movie camera, it had developed even mm. further. And uh, it, was a, it was a real projection and a magnification of the film. Now, for those of us who might not have been doing vaudeville at the time, um, <laughs> who was John P. Harris? John P. Harris, well, uh, he was a, a, a senator. And uh, before that, I don't know who he married, this lady, this family that he married into that Harry Davis married into. I was hoping someone here might shed some light on that. I don't know. But he was integral in the the Pittsburgh film uh, scene. Oh, mercy. And when he started the Nickelodeon, he stayed with it until he had shaped the movie going experience. He, he, uh, movies were only 15 minutes long when he started. And by the time he had uh, completed, it was an hour and a half. The first day they opened up, they had 96 seats. 500 people came to see the 15 minute film, in and out, in and out. And the next day, 1,500 people came to see the film. So this took off. This was like, you know, this was like the sports bar. And one of your, <laughs> one of your very first jobs, if I am correct, was an usherette at one of his theaters. You got it, yeah. <laughs> at the J.P. Harris downtown. My first job at 16 years old. I was the lady with the flashlight showing all the little old ladies with their shopping bags. And in those days, movies just ran continually. They weren't as scheduled as they are today. We've really grown up as a, we've matured too as an audience. But in those days, you just came in and sat down and then you waited until the film came around the next time and you got to that same spot and you were able to go home. Now, at that time, 16 years old, showing people their seats in the movie theater. Did you ever dream that someday you were going to be oh, right up there? Oh, never. I never dreamt of being in the movies at all. I loved musicals on stage. Mm-hmm. That was, to me, the, the epitome, to sing and dance on stage. I loved that. But I never dreamt of being in the movies. And you got your start at the Pittsburgh Playhouse ah, yes. in Oakland. Yes, first as a student, mm-hmm. and then was a, a, a second a junior <laughs> staff member for two years. So this is really sort of a full circle event for you in a lot of ways. You're having Point Park. Yeah, yes. having uh, got your start at the Pittsburgh Playhouse, um, having this knowledge of John P. Harris, now being back here at uh, Point Park facility uh, oh my, yes. by the grace of the John P. Harris Society. It's sort of a, a zen 
oh, circle oh, oh. thing. It is. Yeah. Weird, yeah. <laughs> when I, I decided to uh, learn how to write a screenplay, and I figured this was the place to come, and it certainly is. I was here for just a semester because, you know, being as old as I am. Now that was strange. That was recently, just how many years ago? That was in 09. 09, you went back to school to Point Park. <laughs> Congratulations. That is not easy to do. Yeah, that's for sure. It was a. It was, <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so, what'd you learn on the, on the rebound there? Well, as a matter of fact, I already have a screenplay. Oh, very good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's on Mary Baker Eddy. Now, who is that? Mary Baker Eddy was the woman who. Uh, well, she promoted self-healing. She promoted, she wrote a book called The Science of Mind and Key to the Scriptures. She was not far away from the God picture. And, uh, but, but her philosophy is really, uh, it's uh, self-healing. It's uh, finding the right path to heal yourself of all hmm. ills, uh, any and all. She cured little children you know, she would take their their crippled legs and turn them around and stand them up, and they would walk. Wow. She had very great powers. Anyway. That, yeah. yeah, and for a long time, people went to, remember reading rooms? There used to be reading rooms all over cities, and people would go in and read her book and have some place to rest. And, and in any case, she was quite a, a, a magnificent human being. Mm -hmm. I think she was a philosopher, frankly. I think she should be in a category with the rest of them and speaking of categories you certainly were um in some very high ones or around the late 50s here Ooh, in pittsburgh you said it i've been all the rooms <laughs> <laughs> i've had i've been blessed really incredible yeah and i you know looking um you know into some history here here in the city you did a lot of stage shows uh in the late 50s a lot of radio tv shows to the uh, john king show yes, on kdk yes. you were a regular the on john that Lee king show every day for two years i was on that show with uh, uh i was the girl singer actually mm -hmm. and uh did some comedy when John would write a sketch, John, uh, John Reed King was a wonderful character, and uh, Joe Negri and Johnny Costa, and um, Chuck Spadafore was the drummer, and Jimmy DiGiulio on bass, what a, what a quartet. Wow, they were sensational. So around about 63, you yes. left Pittsburgh. That's it. And in fact, there was an article by one of the Pittsburgh papers where the headline was, Pittsburgh loses one of its brightest stars. <laughs> and they were talking about you. Oh, they were really overstating things. <laughs> well, where did you go? Oh, I went to New York. Yeah? New York, New York. How'd that my go? tap shoes in my suitcase. Well, uh, it was okay, except it was long and hard. Yeah. It took me nine years to finally get a small part on Broadway. Wow. Yeah. But I understudied Helen Gallagher. In No No Nanette. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you ain't lived till you walk on a stage. Everybody knows their part. The orchestra's in the pit. The conductor lifts his baton. <gasps> oh, talk about out of body experience. It was amazing. <laughs> that one night was something else. But nine years is, a, I mean, how, what, what were you doing in those nine years? I mean, clearly auditioning oh, yeah, and yeah, things. On, but, uh, off Broadway, yeah. I did a couple off Broadway shows. I was in Dames at Sea when it closed. And I did one called Shoemaker's Holiday. One an opening closed in a week. <laughs> uh, Some holiday, huh? Yeah. Really. <laughs> and then I was in a Broadway show. You seem to close a lot of shows, Judy. Oh, don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sweating now. I think I need a drink. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I was in a Broadway show called, um, no, wait a minute, Lovely Ladies, Kind Gentlemen. Oh, it was I can see why, version, yes. A musical version of a Tea House of the August Moon, and I was cut. <gasps> How dare they? Oh, it was like one of the worst things that could happen to a person. It was on my list. Oh, but you know what? We've all heard of you. No one's heard of that play. So <laughs> I think you're doing all right. You're all right. <laughs> oh. So uh, how then do you get from closing dames at sea to <laughs> something like uh, what, you know, by some may consider uh, be considered to be one of the most iconic oh, yes. movie musicals oh, my, yes. in film history? Well, I had a wonderful agent, and he submitted me for a part in a Gene Kelly movie. It was going to start Sandra D, and he needed a roommate. And when I walked into the interview, he was taken with the fact that I looked like and sounded like Carol Haney, who was a very dear friend of his, and she had passed away. So uh, that we had an instant kind of bond. Now, Gene Kelly needed someone to play a roommate, or he wanted a roommate <laughs> for himself? You just said Gene Kelly needed a roommate. <laughs> 
I'm, I just I just want to clarify this oh, for I our audience. I don't blame you. I like it logical. <laughs> and we, and we don't want any you know rumors That's out right. there. You know? <laughs> Uh, so uh, yeah, what he, he wanted you to play a roommate. Yes, I, okay. He did. And then yeah. I auditioned for him another time, and this time I got to sing for him. Mm -hmm. So when he was auditioning for Hello Dolly, I had not been submitted, and he asked for me. Wow. So I went and uh, got the part. Because the film with Sandra D actually never did get produced. That's true. Um, but technically, I didn't know that. I've done my research. No kidding. And this is only my second cocktail, so we're we're still you know pretty pretty good. But. Um, but you were cast in that, essentially. So if it would have been made, it would have been you and Sandra D. Did you get to meet her? No, no, no? never got that far. Mm -hmm. But in the screen, the screen test for Hello, Dolly, I was originally, uh, uh, well, what does it say? Cast? Minnie Faye. Yes. Minnie really? Faye. I was, I was just kind of throwing it's that out there. That's absolutely true. But I wasn't right for the part, essentially. But we were finished with the rehearsal, and Gene said to me, notice Gene, I called him by his first name, he said, could you dance up onto that chair? <laughs> if I had a dime for every time a man's asked me to do that. <laughs> you too. Right? I know. <laughs> oh, I need another drink. <laughs> there, there's plenty more where these came from. <laughs> well, I, in essence, I did it. I did a tour jeté and I nailed it. Wow. I danced right up to the chair. And you will now repeat that for us here. <laughs> <laughs> for the late show, oh, the late dude. show. Yeah. But it was so wonderful. Wow, so you, that's how you got the part. That's you right. That's danced on a chair for, for Gene Kelly. <laughs> I guess that would be how you impress the likes of Gene oh, Kelly. Oh, wasn't he fabulous? What a human being this one was. Yeah. Wonderful man. So this was that then technically your first film? Oh, yes. yes. Wow. So they just kind of whisked you off to Hollywood from oh, New York? Oh, mercy. And I didn't get a script until I was on the plane. It was all so dramatic. <laughs> wow. It was wonderful fun. That's cool. And Gene made it as, of, as much of an experience as possible for me, I think. I don't know why he just really took to me. And, and he called, called one day, put me on the schedule. And so I'm in, the, in my house on my knees scrubbing the floor, okay? <laughs> and the doorbell rings and I go to the door and it's a driver. He says, uh, Mr. Kelly wants you on the set now. I said, what? He said, I, do I get dressed? No. <laughs> now. So I went wow. in the, just sat in the limousine with my knees all dirty from the kid and went to the, to the studio. Now, you and Gene Kelly share uh, Pittsburgh in common. Oh, uh, yes. He's a Pittsburgher. You're a Pittsburgher. Did you talk about Pittsburgh at all with Gene? No, but I think that's pretty a lot of what, how I got the part. So he knew that. He knew oh, where you had your yes. roots. Yes, he did. And he's, he was very fond of Pittsburgh, always. And my father came to see the, the filming, and it was the parade sequence. Mm -hmm. And there was a big um, billboard, and it said Heinz Ketchup. And it was spelled C-A-T-S-U-P. And my dad said, uh, you know, that's Heinz initiated the spelling, K-E-T-C-H-U-P. Mm. And I said, oh, Dad, we better tell somebody. So we told an assistant director, and don't you know that before we filmed, they had repainted it. They wow. changed the spelling. You can see it in the movie. Well, we'll look for that today. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, for, for those who might not know, you played Gussie Granger, yes. a.k.a. Ernestina Semple, in, in the film. <laughs> and, you know, I, you are one of my favorite parts about this movie. Oh, truly. Please. And I'm not just saying that. Oh, yes, that you are. scene. <laughs> that scene, the, the Harmonia Garden scene, oh. where she comes down the steps and there's a 15-minute <laughs> musical number all about her coming into the restaurant. Now, who right. among us has not wanted to walk into, like, Lamont on Mount Washington <laughs> and have that happen? Oh, really? You know? I live for that scene every oh. single time. It has you in it. It has Barbara, of course. It has Louis Armstrong. Oh, no. I mean, I love what a so hot much. scene to be in oh, in that no movie. Kidding. It was beautiful. And the set was magnificent. And you opened the door, and it smelled of the flowers that were on the tables. It was just gorgeous. Wow. It was really wonderful. Was the food real? Did you get to eat? No. Yeah. <laughs> I had no food at all. Oh. Not even prop food. Wow. Oh, that was frightening. Well, and you make your, actually, you may recognize this woman. <laughs> um, this is this is you in uh, your first appearance in the movie, uh, in the parade scene where Barbara Streisand kind of basically fishes you out and says, "Hey, can you do me a favor and play right. this this person?" And I got to tell you, any woman 
that makes an entrance in a pink basket hat carrying a pig is my kind of woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the pig was so sweet. Oh, yeah? Oh, <laughs> he was really, and he was a baby. Oh, yeah, that's a small pig by, yeah, by, by as far so as pigs go. So, <laughs> so I gotta ask. <laughs> Did, did you get hazard pay for working with Streisand? <laughs> <laughs> what 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 no. was she like? What oh, was she really? Like? When I I think I think it was because it was Hollywood and everybody is beautiful there. You know, all the people who work in the studio are beautiful. She was so happy to meet me. Hmm. She gave me such a hand clasp. You know, I looked like somebody from the neighborhood. <laughs> that made her happy. Oh, oh she was nice. She good, was really nice. Good. I liked her. She was cute. I didn't have I didn't meet her often. You know. Just kind of the, during this uh, couple of scenes that yeah, you did there yeah. in the restaurant. Walter yeah. Matthau, you worked with on oh, this. Oh, uh, he was frightening. Really? <laughs> but he's funny. Yeah. He's funny when he marches. Just watching him march down the street made me laugh. Uh, <laughs> fabulous. Well, what, did, just kind of had a funny walk yeah, to him or something? Yeah, he has a gait. Yeah. How long did, did it take you to shoot your... your oh, uh, from April to the September. Really? Just yes. those, those couple of scenes? Oh, yes. That's what I mean. Gene Kelly... He was meticulous. I, I guess he didn't... I don't know that he did that, but it just turned out that way. Hmm. And it was a rehearsal month in April, and then the filming of Harmonia Gardens. And that was amazing because all throughout the um, Waiters Gallop, they call that big dance number with the waiters, yep. hmm. everybody who was... Uh, um, a choreographer ended up with broken legs, broken ribs. <gasps> I was amazing. By the time I used to periodically drop in and watch the filming, and uh, Michael Kidd was in a wheelchair, <laughs> and his assistant was on crutches. Oh, it was a tough scene. <laughs> well, it sounds like it. No yeah, kidding. and you see him wheeled out in hospital beds at the end oh, of the day. Oh, brother! Wow, but you yeah. you you got out of it unscathed. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Any dates with Walter Matthau? Oh, no. No? I was a good friendship with Tommy Toon. Oh, yeah, we yeah. We were good buddies. Yeah, that was fun. Tall guy. Oh, isn't he? Six foot seven. Yeah. Ooh, boy. You still keep in touch? No, every once in a while we cross yeah. paths and say hello. Really? Like yeah. at Primanis or like... But, no, but. no. It was on a, on a, um, a Facebook Oh, you're Facebook, Facebook friends with Tommy Toon. Well, no, but but it was it was a connection on Facebook. Oh, okay, we okay. Hello. We're Facebook friends. Yes. You're, you're into the oh, social media, it. yeah. Oh, I love it. I think it's great stuff. Oh, Berg Vivant. Uh -huh. Thank you, yes. Uh, thank you again. It was wonderful to get, get your messages and reviews and things. And through Berg Vivant, we uh, did get a lot of response to the event today. We have some questions from fans out there that weren't able to make it that wow. uh, we'll, we'll go over uh, in a bit. But... Um, when you saw this movie for the first time, was it back here in Pittsburgh? Yes, yes, it was. It was at the Warner Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a wonderful part of this. After having been usherette in the movie The Biz, and then being driven up in a limousine to go to the Warner for this big, wonderful <laughs> premiere. Oh, please. That gave me goosebumps. Yeah. It really did. What would you think of the film, all in all? I, I, well, I could only love it. I could only relive, you know, having yeah. the experience of making it. So I thought it was divine. We're going to see it on Blu-ray oh. today. What do you think about that? Does it make me look good? Yeah, they, they make <laughs> Blu-ray makes everybody look good. All right. <laughs> that pig is going to be crisper and sharper yeah. than, than you've ever seen Sweetheart. before. So what, uh, what did Hello, Dolly lead to? What came after? Well, I, actually, my stint on Broadway, uh, substituting for Helen Gallagher, was a part of that, I think. Okay. And closing in Dames at Sea, too. I think all of that just lifted me up. I got, uh, my resume was, uh, you know, much broad, much more impressive, and I got some parts. And then I got to, uh, two years at the ACT, hmm. American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, as a repertory actress, mind you. Wow. Ah, I don't think that was coming from the Hello Dolly movie, but it didn't hurt. It's coming from talent. That's it. You got oh, it, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find that uh, more rewarding, your work in film or work on the stage? Oh, I love the stage. Mm. Please, that's my that's my first love. Yeah, that's really good stuff. Would you get back on stage at this point in your life? Oh, I don't think I could. <laughs> really, it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. I'm just doing this. I know you you have experienced. Well, I heard once that a uh, performance takes as much energy as a miner expends in eight hours. 
A minor. A oh, minor, you know, with the uh, I'm thinking like, <laughs> like minor, like under the age oh, of 21, they can't drink. That's where my mind too. goes. <laughs> well, they spend a lot of energy. Yeah, that's there. what I was going to say. Yeah, really. <laughs> but maybe let, let's say somebody had like a small cameo role for you on stage. Would you consider that? You know, I probably would. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> is there is there a role that you've just wanted to play and never had the opportunity? Gee, no. I, I really, uh, I, I felt complete yeah. when I left it all. My mother said as she was leaving this world, she said, please don't beg parts when you're over the hill. Wow. Okay, mother. <laughs> please don't beg parts uh -huh. when you're over the hill. So right. is that kind of a way to say no when to quit or quit when you're ahead? No kidding. Wow. So I, well, I wrapped it all up at the end of the two years at ACT. Yeah. Now you actually played Dolly in Hello, Dolly at yes, one point. Yes, I did. How, and it was that after the film? Uh, but wait a minute. Yes, yes. No, no, it wasn't. Oh, it was before the film. It was before the okay. film. Okay. Yeah, it was before the film. So you weren't like, you know, trying to one-up Streisand or anything? Opera Club. No. <laughs> oh, it's a very tough part. It is. Yeah. You're on stage. I would I would love to see you in Hello, or um, Anti-Mame. I think you'd be a great Anti-Mame. Oh, really? Have you ever played it? I always figured myself for Gooch. <laughs> Am I in the right place? <laughs> well, we can arrange that too. Gooch has less lines. The Gooch. All right, if I produced Auntie Mame, okay. would you play Gooch? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, and you're going to be the Gooch. Only if you do private lives. Oh, you'd like can to I see me in that. I'll produce that. Okay, you okay. know, everybody tells me Noel Coward, you know. Oh, yeah, you'd be perfect. Or a one man Paul Lind show. <laughs> That's what I get a lot too. Oh, what do you think, Jody? <laughs> <laughs> See? That's a good link. Yeah. Do you have some impersonations you like? No, no, I no. don't. Not a single one. You, you know, I, I've seen you, of course, in this movie. You're, you're great comedic. You know, uh, Too bad I didn't have any funny lines. Well, I think you could ad lib some. What, one of them, <laughs> no, one of your, what is your line? Something like this. So this conversation, I find this trivial conversation completely unnecessary or something do like that. It all perfect. And I'm thinking, oh my God, just don't let that be the first thing out of her mouth when she sits down <laughs> for this interview. I find this trivial conversation completely unnecessary. I mean, a short interview. But no, you've been delightful. Thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, um, did you find yourself doing a lot more comedy than, than drama? I mean, because just talking oh, sure. to you and meeting you, I mean, you are you have such a beautiful personality. You know? oh, well, uh, and, I and I think it really lends itself to, to laughter. I and got a comedic yeah. rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a rhythm that I think is comedy. Did you ever, have you ever taught it? Uh, I actually have a substitute teacher for, uh, for acting at uh, Kappa. Oh, okay. Uh, Very good. The fellow was uh, off to New York to direct something, and I substituted for him. I loved it. It was wonderful fun. Do you feel that acting is something that can be taught? Oh, sure. Sure. And there are some, uh, there's Milton Katselis is about the best acting teacher out there, mm -hmm. I think. I, I think that this actor studio is still uh, working, too, isn't it? The, yeah, that's still going. I, right, James right. Lipton hosts it right, on right, TV. Right, right. But you mean the actual yes, studio, the not actual the show? Yes, the actual studio. With a, and uh, um, a girl that I worked with in upstairs at the downstairs in New York, Carol Morley, teaches at the Herbert Berghoff studio. Mm. So uh, it's still happening. Yes, acting is something that can be taught. And I, the Stanislavski book is the first thing to do. Yeah. If you have, to, if you want to act, you read so you're, that you're book. of the Stanislavski school, then. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's really a good book. I have read it. You know, being a Point Park student myself, oh, you right. know, they still <laughs> shuffle that book around oh, every now and then. Good. Yeah. So, what advice would you have to young aspiring actors, whether they be looking to get into stage or into film? Wow. Somebody once gave me some advice I used all the time. And it was, if anything can stop you, let it. Hmm. Wow. That's a hard one to swallow, but I know, very true. I know, but it's true. Yeah, because it's a very difficult business. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of downtime. So Tell me about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's a great, it's worthwhile. Yep, so you do. I adore it. I wouldn't have wanted to spend my life any other way. What brought you back to Pittsburgh? Well, it was a family thing. Mm. My father needed my help. And I took care of him for seven years before he died. And I think that was a good thing to do. Oh, yeah. 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 What are some of your favorite aspects of Pittsburgh? Oh, wow. What makes it a good city to live in? The people. Yeah. 
the, you don't find people, yeah. You don't find people as willing, as available. You just don't find people like Pittsburghers everywhere. It's a, it's Which true. is why a show like this is a hoot. I mean, we never run out of material. <laughs> There's so many fascinating folks to interview oh, her case I love in point. Your show. And I you talked about the lady with the olive oil. Yeah, Olive oh, and Marlowe. Oh, and the man Have with you been? the documents. The man with the oh the Kirk oh, Shaw who's I the lo- um, I love art critic. Show. I just love your show. You know, we talked about on that episode with Kurt Shaw, Shaw Galleries downtown by the way, uh, uh, he has uh, one of his clients, I think, is a man who actually mapped the moon for NASA. Whoa! And he's a Pittsburgher as oh, well. So my. we're trying to get him on the show. Oh, I would say. Um, yeah. Woo! Is that a place you'd like to go anytime? <laughs> <laughs> to, to travel? To the moon, Alice. Yeah. So what, yeah. keep, what keeps you busy in Pittsburgh these days? Well, I'm a, I am write. Mm-hmm. Now I'm writing. I love writing. It's wonderful. I haven't uh, been at it lately. I better get back to it. Be, it we won't keep juices. you too long today. Oh, okay. yeah, we'll <laughs> <laughs> the juices in creativity are just really going to keep me alive, I hope. I hope to live to be 140. Gee. Why not? Right. Yeah, I mean, once 150. you get to point, let's, you know, well, let's not ahead. be shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, necessary to keep the creative juices flowing. Yes. So I'll be writing the whole time. Indeed. Well, as I said, we have some questions from um, some folks uh, that wrote to us on Berg Vivant for you. Um, so the first one is um, from Claudia. And Claudia writes, and Claudia, I think, is here, actually. Is she? Maybe? No? No, Claudia? Um, Might you ask Miss Nays to talk about how Gene Kelly influenced her dancing? Perhaps ask her if he taught her any special moves. And special moves is in quotations, so I don't know how she means that. (laughs) But um, (laughs) we talked a little bit about how you got the part of uh, Hello, Dolly. Yes, that um, is really it, because it was a very big heartbreak for me to be in a movie musical mm -hmm. and not sing and dance. That's true. You oh, don't sing in this. Was so terrible. Oh, yeah. so yeah, he really probably didn't do any choreography with you. But no. if he had, you'd ended up with Michael Kidd in a wheelchair. <laughs> so maybe it's all for True. the best. No? I think dancing onto the mm-hmm. chair was about as good as it could get. But you and he seemed to have a pretty smashing relationship. Yes, you and Gene really Kelly. Seemed so. I loved him. Yeah. I, we didn't really get it. I mean, you know, I wasn't over for dinner or anything like that. But well, I his loss. Was... <laughs> <laughs> He's charming. Um. From Phil in Dormont. Hi, Judy! Exclamation point. Okay, hi, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dolly is one of my favorite movie musicals. I have seen it over 50 times. Boy, oh, my God. This, so this man essentially has spent, what, six months of his life watching Hello, <laughs> Dolly? I had to have him on the show. Um, and you're my favorite part. Wow. Do you keep in touch with the pig? <laughs> <laughs> that poor little baby. And just for the record, we he we have to, he is talking about the the actual pig, pig. yeah, um, <laughs> in the photo. Are you sure? Uh, well, he doesn't specify, so I guess that's just sort of a. Well, I um, wasn't going to tell you this, but you can cut this out. The pig actually wet on me. <laughs> during the filming. Well, it was like six hours, you know? It was a little thing to do. P.S. No aroma. (laughs) Pig is clean. (laughs) Well, we certainly have learned a lot today. Um, If you're ever on set with a pig... um, Don't worry about it. (laughs) Next question. (laughs) Um, Which did you enjoy most, your work on stage, radio, film, or television? From Cosette. Cosette, really. From Castle Shannon on a Cloud. No, she didn't say where she's from. But but we kind of talked about that, too. Right, right, yeah. Uh, (laughs) From Cosette. um, Yes, I did like the stage best. Now, you did do radio as well, yes? Or am I making that up? Well, when I was uh, 10 years old, I was in the Enright amateur hour show wow and sang on the radio i got around you sure did i never left a stone unturned here i also did wilkins the wilkins amateur hour Mm -hmm. i did that one too and i sat beside a fellow who played the spoons (laughs) i'm not kidding i'm really old (laughs) 
I think there's still spoon players out there. Oh, really? I think so. I, I, I from time to time, to, <laughs> you know, yeah, oh, on funny. a Sunday afternoon, just, yeah. dun, 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 you know, I have a sad life. But, um, <laughs> I don't think so. But you know, in in those days, back at the the um, the King show, you know, you worked with a lot of other notable Pittsburghers. Uh, Joe Negri. Oh, yes. you and Joe go way back. Oh mercy! I'm a godmother for uh, his child's child. Wow. We yeah. need to, you know, uh, that's what I'd like to see is a, a Judy Nays Joe Negri duet. Oh, I loved singing with Joe. We had a good time. We yeah, really let's do that. Time. Oh, because yeah. he plays all over the place. Oh, I, I love him. I, I, every other benefit I go to, Joe Negri's there. Oh, yes, he carries his guitar and his amp. His wife's always worried about him because he's toting all this equipment all the time. Yeah, but he's strong. He's, he teaches at Carnegie Mellon. Oh, does he? Yeah. yeah, and Duquesne, I think. I want to get you and Joe together on oh, stage. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we need I to get him on the show. Him. Oh, he's wonderful. That would be neat too. And Helen Wayne Rao, you acted with on oh, stage. Oh, I loved her. She was one. Well, I was in Hel- Once Upon a Mattress. Mm. She was divine in that show. And th- th- this is, of course, a name that Point Parkers will recognize because the Rao Theater at uh, right, the Playhouse right. is oh, named Bye after Bye her. Bye Bye Birdie, we were in together mm-hmm. too. The record-breaking Bye Bye Birdie at the Playhouse. Yes, with Gene Te- or Gene Ray. Wow. Gene Ray was the. Dick Van Dyke part. They almost said Gene Tierney. I almost did. So do you, I knew are, I worked you, him with, with him too. Do you have any other celeb friends that we don't know about Ooh. from back in the day? <laughs> no. No? I don't think so. You don't think? I'm trying to remember. They're scandalous stories. We can't share them. That's what it is. Um, nah. This uh, comes from Sandy. Sandy says, I was lucky enough to see Judy do her thing so well at the Pittsburgh Playhouse and to be her friend for many moons. She is special. Oh, is that Sandy Mason? I think so. Sandy Mason, is that oh, you? Oh, Sandy she? Mason. She's, uh, she's in Nashville. Oh, okay. She's wow, we've class. got fans in Nashville of oh, Burke Vivant. Yeah, wow. we, we were in class together. Oh. We worked in, uh, well, she was behind me. But uh, we were in, in the Pittsburgh Playhouse Well, school. that's what was great to see, you know, in, in response to putting the word out about this event and, you know, asking folks if they had questions to write in. We got a lot of questions. We got so many just expressions of praise and gratitude wow. as well. And fr- from all over the world. I, I didn't know Sandy was from Nashville. Oh, how terrific. You have touched lives, oh, Judy. Oh, beautiful. Hmm? <laughs> I love that idea. Um, and Chad in Oakland asks, "What do what do you have? What advice do you have for young aspiring actors?" And I kind of stole Chad's question. I actually asked you a yes, little bit yes. about that already. Um, but what do you think about the business today, as opposed to say in '69 when you had made this film? Uh, how the film industry has changed? Oh, I think it looks much more exciting now. Oh yeah, people, explosions and things. Yes, and well, <laughs> it's a lot of fun because there are so many more outlets. There's so much more for actors to do. There are so many more theaters. There are so many more movies. There are so many more internet uh, mm-hmm. internet uh, avenues and cable television. There's just so much act. There's so much call for actors. I would just say, be a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's good advice. <laughs> oh, I love my my mother. When I was uh, uh, going on the Enright Amateur Hour, I was preparing my song. I sang it for her. She said to me, "I didn't believe you." What? My mother was a good critic, <laughs> you mm. can tell. I didn't believe you, she said to me. And from that moment on, boom, something <laughs> went off in my head, and I realized that I had to get dig deeper to, to convince people of whatever I was saying or singing. And I think that was good advice. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, I think we might like to open it up to the audience. If anybody joining us today has any questions for you, just raise a hand and loud and proud. Uh, Ask away. Or have we answered every single thing <laughs> we have. that you have been curious about? Mr. Fay, yes. Perhaps it's obvious to everyone, but the John Harris that you spoke of and the famous Harris Theater, the connection wasn't made explicitly. Is, was there a connection? Is there a connection between John P. Harris and the Harris Theater that is downtown today? Oh, yes. His partner, Harry Davis, built many of the theaters in in the city of Pittsburgh including the Warner it was originally called the grand uh, the million dollar grand and that was where they moved from Smithfield to the Warner on 5th Avenue and the JP Harris was renamed in his honor in 1935 by Harry Davis 
This was after John P. Harris had died. He died in uh, Washington, D.C. as a senator from Pennsylvania. He collapsed and died hmm. in a committee room. But his partner renamed that theater after him. Ford. Well, thanks. I, I, when I heard the two names mentioned and not the connection, I thought there has to be. Thank you and so there much. you have it. Yes, sir. Indeed. We had another question. Um, sir? Yes. You. Yeah. Uh, I just wondered what you, I didn't know I was coming to this and mostly have been affiliated with music. Um, but it seems to go pretty much across the board when anybody has talent in Pittsburgh and you mentioned Gene Kelly and this renaissance thing that's going on now. I'm somebody that started doing something in the 80s and, and I was the first person to do national record. I most work, work, uh, work mostly with recording artists, but I was um, lucky enough to be able to do interviews with recording artists popular at that time. And there's always been a damnation to anybody who didn't leave. Do you consider yourself to be a person who left Pittsburgh and that's why you made it? Oh, mercy no. Oh, no. I, I, I always wanted to be on Broadway, and so I naturally went to New York. But uh, I don't think that's true at all. But I understand what you're saying. Yes, a lot of people do consider that if you don't leave, then there's a, you're, you're lacking some courage or something. I don't think that's the case at all. There's this a, city is... To be a phenomenon that when you come back, everybody's like rolling out the red carpet. But if you hang around... Jimmy Beaumont is a, an example I hear about from the Skyliners. I talk to DJs and people like that that say, you know, he was driving a cab because he just didn't leave Pittsburgh. Hmm. But if he had left and came back, then... He would have had the royal treatment. Right. They always contend that. If he had left... This is a white act that headlined the Apollo three times. You know, so he wow. had these things going for him, but he just didn't leave and go. Well, you know, you did leave your tiara at home today. <laughs> um, I, I, that was humble of you. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I didn't want to show off. All right. Uh, but you know, when you came back to Pittsburgh, um, you know, how were you received? Did you make an effort to get back into the theater scene uh, when you returned? No. Because no. it was family was your focus at that yes, point. So yes, I really didn't want to, And I, I really, I honestly am allergic to grease paint. Really? Yes, at the, la at the end. Well, there goes your days as a rodeo clown. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it is a shame. I know. Goodbye, false eyelashes. Indeed. But well, listen, I'd like, to, I'd like to propose a toast to J.P. Harris. Oh, uh, yes, very good. Here's to JP. The man who gave us the movie going experience. Indeed. Boy, that's major. Mm hmm. Ah. Any other questions from the house? Yes, up front. Is there any offstage um, advice you've gotten that had made you or makes you daily a better actor, writer, arts participant? Well, Milton Kitsellis gave, he gave us a, a class, an acting class when I was a student at the Pittsburgh Playhouse, and he told us that every day we should, uh, we should look afresh at everything. And he said, don't take the same route to work every day. Take a different way, go a different way. Observe, observe, observe. And I think that was very good, that was good advice. I am a camera. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, no aroma.